I am doing another quick old one take because I really need to go to sleep. Uh, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about Teresa of the Andes, Saint Teresa of the Andes. She's a relatively new saint and a lot of people don't know about her. So yeah, she's really, really cool. She's like the fifth Saint Teresa Carmelite saint, which is quite a legacy, uh, but she certainly doesn't disappoint. Um, she entered Carmel as soon as she was possibly able. Um, I think she was about 18. Yeah, 18, because she died 11 months after that, and she was not even 20 years old yet. And she was just an incredible, incredible mammoth of spirituality while being still so simple and um, really encapsulating the uh, Carmelite charism, which is... Uh, simplicity and simply loving and just being receptive to God's love and so she definitely had mystical experiences not quite as dramatically as like St. Teresa of Avila but definitely some and she has a beautiful diary um, I actually have this is a combination diary and biography it's called God the joy of my life I would recommend it it's got fantastic content although I could use some editing but never mind about that <laughs> and um I think what distinguishes St. Teresa of the Andes from the others is that, uh, well, maybe not all the others, but one, one special thing about her is that her family was relatively normal. <laughs> you know, St. Teresa, um, St. Therese, like literally all of her sisters became nuns and her parents are now saints and some of her sisters should be up for canonization. I think one of them is. Um, they built her and made her into the mammoth saint she was, like, they raised her. But St. Teresa of the Andes, like, her family had problems. Like, her her dad wasn't in the picture some of the time. And, and her you know, older brother, you know, wayward, as typical. <laughs> but, like, it makes her, I think, a bit more relatable um, to a lot of situations nowadays. Um, and St. Therese, um, the, the little flower is such an incredible inspiration, but I think Teresa of the Andes is, is different, but also incredibly inspirational. Um, there's something else I was going to say about her. Yeah, she is the uh, patron saint of youth, um, and I think she's also really, really relatable on that level as well, because she was such a vibrant person. I mean, she loved things that we love. She loved school. Uh, she loved sports, she loved horseback riding, and, and music, and family, and friends, and fun, and um, none of that was diminished when she entered Carmel. It was, well, it wasn't quite, like, magnified, but she was so ready, like, that was the next step of her life, that was it, and... Um, when she died, that was her next step. And you don't get the feeling that her life was cut short at all. It was cut, but it wasn't cut short. Like, that was the way it was supposed to end. And she knew that, and everybody else knew it. Her family didn't get one single consolation letter. They were all, congratulations, you've got a saint in your family. <laughs> uh, so she's a pretty cool saint. I would definitely recommend you look her up. And thank you very much for watching. I'll be back tomorrow. Bye.